We're going to begin in Baltimore, where crews will now start to remove the wreckage from the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Our transportation correspondent, Gio Benitez, is there on the scene for us. And Gio, we're learning some new details about the final moments on that ship before the collision. Good morning to you. That's right, Robin. Good morning. Yeah, those details are coming from the voice and data recorders that were on that ship. Those recorders are now in D.C. being analyzed. But as you said, those final minutes are now coming into focus. Overnight, the NTSB gaining access to preliminary data from the Voyage data recorder, the agency hearing audio, which hasn't been released yet from the ship's bridge, detailing the moments before that catastrophic collision. The lights on the ship going dark at 1.24 a.m., alarms then ringing out seconds later. Within minutes, the two pilots calling steering orders, radioing for tugboats to assist and dropping the ship's port anchor, then issuing that mayday call. It's just utter devastation. The NTSB aboard the ship Wednesday, finding 764 tons of hazardous materials. Mostly corrosives, flammables, and some miscellaneous hazardous materials. Some of the hazmat containers were breached. We have seen sheen on the waterway. And after more than a day of treacherous searching, divers recovering a red pickup truck. Two victims found inside, 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes and 26-year-old Dorlian Cabrera. Officials saying other vehicles have been detected but have not yet been recovered. Based on sonar scans, we firmly believe that the vehicles are encased in the superstructure and concrete we tragically saw it come down. At this point, this moves to a salvage recovery effort. Newly released video showing another angle of the moments leading up to the collapse, the lights from the construction crews flashing. Is there our crew work on the bridge right now? After the 95,000 ton container ships made a call, first responders had less than two minutes to shut down traffic on the bridge. I'm holding traffic now. One of the two surviving crew members telling the governor it was an officer's voice he heard telling him to move off the bridge, saving his life. As he was moving off of the bridge uh, and literally saw the bridge fall right after he moved off. Among the four crew members still missing, Miguel Luna, originally from El Salvador, and Minor Suazo Sandoval, a father of two, an immigrant from Honduras. Sandoval's brother, Martin, saying his brother was a fundamental pillar of the family. We will rebuild and heal the Baltimore way, and that's together. And we're now learning more about that ship. The Coast Guard saying Dolly was undergoing routine engine maintenance while in the port of Baltimore. Next, the difficult job of removing the ship from the harbor. The real critical thing here is that, as you know, a portion of the bridge remains on the bow of that ship. The vessel bow is sitting on the bottom because of the weight of that bridge debris on there. In the meantime, vessel traffic for the busy port is suspended indefinitely. With the amount of cargo that comes into this country, it's you need to understand how, I guess, this would, how, how fragile this can be. You know, who would ever think this would happen? Now, we still don't know what caused the ship's power outage. That's going to take more time. But the priority right now is to safely remove that bridge and that ship from the harbor here so that you could safely and eventually reopen the Port of Baltimore. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.